this is Higgledy Piggledy, known as Pickle. Pickle is a fiberglass and wooden boat. I've been on this boat for about 14 years. We've been on the Kennet and Avon Canal for about 12, 13 years. It's just two of us, but it's, it's just about enough space for two people to live. Most of our life is spent on Pickle because we home educate and uh, he's never gone to nursery or school, so the attachment to the boat is massive. Because Cub's dad is brilliant at making things pedal powered, I asked him to devise something that would be pedal powered for Pickle. There's no need to be fast on the canal, you can only go at four miles an hour anyway. It's a beautiful valley, why would you want to police it with a massive great big diesel engine if you don't need to? Just a slight bit of breeze, and it pushes me off course. I've got very little control. Just staying still. I'm rather hoping just to get somewhere close to the bank. I can just get on with the ropes. Most people on the canals don't have a home mooring. It costs a lot of money for not very much, especially on this stretch here. So we're all what is termed as continuous cruisers, which means we move every 14 days. There are practical reasons for moving every two weeks. Our water tanks only hold a certain amount of water. You know, we can go for sort of maybe three or four weeks if we really push it. But most people have to empty their toilet and it, and it works out fine. The legal requirements don't pose a difficulty for most people. The new guidelines do pose a problem. I think people understand that when you're managing 2,000 miles of canals and rivers, that you have to do lots of things that ideally we wouldn't want to spend our money on. We sometimes have to take action against people who are abusing the canals and the rivers and uh, making them unpleasant for other people. Pick out a coin and it says the letter B and it's a one and a four. Have you got a one and a four? Have I now? Yes. Well done, 14. Very good, Carl. <laughs> so section eight says, having considered all the facts, we have concluded that you are not meeting the legal requirements requested of you. As a result, you leave me with no alternative but to terminate your licence with immediate effect. As your boat no longer has a valid licence, we require you to remove it from the inland waterways owned or managed by the CRT with 28 day, within 28 days of this letter. If we lose this, this is our home. No, that's it. You know, this is this is the only life Cub's ever known. It's his community, it's his friends, it's his environment. And I've had to reassure him that they're not going to take the boat off us. But, um, because it's ongoing. <coughs> because it's ongoing, of course it's... um, it's And he sees... You know, he, he, he hears from other people what they're going through. Of course it's going to be a, a, a stress to him and a concern. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with having to move every two weeks. That movement does something. It brings a lot of life. It starts everything afresh. And there is a beauty to living on a boat. It's sustainable living. It's smaller living. You know what you use. You know how much you take. It's a very, very kind, embracing community. We know people who don't live on boats who've also said this is the most special place they know of. It's such a beautiful way of life. People help each other out all the time and such an amazing, diverse community. It's really unique because it's shifting all the time. The law says that we're entitled to live on the canal. It's, it's a legitimate way of life as long as we follow the Waterways Act. But the trouble now that we have is the Canal and River Trust keep adding more and more rules on that aren't enshrined in law, but they send you enforcement notices saying we can destroy your home, take your home away. It's a huge source of anxiety for a lot of people. The Acts of Parliament say that boaters should move to a different place every 14 days and they should be bona fide navigating. Now, they don't say how far they have to move, and we don't say that to boaters either, because we don't have the powers to say that. But we interpret that through our guidance for boaters without home mooring. So 
that is where we say to people, this is how far you have to go as a minimum. Far enough has never been defined in law, but they appear now to be working to a minimum distance for compliance of 15 to 20 miles, and they would normally expect it to be greater than that. I've seen more people being dragged into the enforcement process, and these people have travelled a distance that was acceptable last year. So the constantly shifting sands of CRT bring more and more people into the net. Every time you're asked to do something, you go and do it. But then the benchmark changes. It has to be clear. You have to know what's expected. And what's expected has to be fair. We try and be as clear as we can be to voters about what the guidelines are for them. We can't explicitly say how far you have to move to, but what we can do is remind them if they're not moving to another place every 14 days. And as part of our new processes, we're also contacting voters every three months if they aren't moving enough. So without specifying how far you have to move, that will give them a clear idea if they are meeting the guidelines or not. Providing people keep moving and they don't overstay and they follow the guidance, then they're welcome to travel on any of our waterways. It seems now they are actually revoking licences and um, seeking Section 8 against people who they just uh, don't feel have moved far enough. Um, and they themselves have, have admitted that it would be uh, inappropriate for them to specify Distance. What they're alleging in Bev's case is that she hasn't travelled far enough to comply with the Kennet and Avon uh, local plan, which um, only lasted for a year. Will we get a Section 8 ever again? I don't know. Hopefully this one would be revoked and we won't, we won't get a section, another Section 8. A Section 8 really is for abandoned or sunken boats and a Section 13 is for boats who are on the water without a licence. Now, I've got a licence, except they've revoked it, and they've passed my licence this back, and they've sent me, you know, a cheque for the unused portion of my licence, which I haven't cashed, because, as far as I'm concerned, I still have a valid licence. I'm abiding by the 1995 Waterways Act, which is to move our vessel every 14 days to a different place unless there's reasonable circumstances. The dubious legality of it is... It's massive, really. It's wasted thousands and thousands of pounds of CRT's money. It's a charity, and this is what their money is going towards. I think what they're trying to do is just create an atmosphere of fear amongst a lot of liverboard boaters to put people off living on the canal and moving onto the canal. When we look at year on year, so the last couple of years, on the Kennet and Avon Canal, we haven't seen a really significant growth in boats. But in some areas, yeah. in London, we've seen a huge increase. Last year, court papers was delivered to me, so I was going to talk to the judge seriously about their kind of misrepresentation of their rights when they decided the best thing to do was to withdraw from the case. So we didn't go into the courtroom and I was offered a licence from CRT. And part of the agreement is they bring in a confidentiality clause. And they've done this to several people because I guess they don't want the whole world knowing what's going on. I don't know how much enforcement is costing overall, but it looks like they've made up their minds that getting two or three hundred boats without home moorings off the water is worth the money that it's going to cost them. I don't think there ever is a logical explanation for prejudice. It's not logical. This persecution of boat dwellers without home moorings is irrational. At the time I was contemplating, I was actually threatening to hang myself in a tree. Um, and I was feeling desperately suicidal. And I was seriously saying the worst move of my life was ever getting a boat on the waterways. You know, because of this. It's that that destroys your life, honest. So, you know, and it is sad. People did enjoy the life here, and they're not enjoying it anymore. We are trying to be helpful to boaters, sending them reminders to say, 
you need to move a little bit further so that they can increase their movement pattern and not be at risk of not being relicensed at the end of their 12 months. They send you enforcement notices saying you have to travel further even though they know they can't set minimum distances. People who are following the Waterways Act are getting these threatening letters saying they're going to have their home taken away from them. They're now refusing to renew a lot of people's boat licences for 12 months and since the policy came into effect, about a third of the total number of boats without a home mooring have had licence renewal for 12 months refused. That's a third of boaters without a home mooring who um, are at risk of losing their homes. The last four weeks has been taken up by meetings, phone calls, letter writing, um, just all kinds of things surrounding that. His education has just been sidelined so that we can focus on trying to keep our home. There's another. That's the, that's the first two sheets of it. Yeah. Another thing. <coughs> I know it's just taken a long time, Cub, but this is what the last few weeks have been about, haven't they? And I've asked you to be patient. And when we go to Bath, we can just hang out for a bit, OK? It's putting pressure on people, and the families are going to be the first to move. They're the ones that can't make the new distances they keep making up. And once you've lost the families, you're losing a big part of the spirit. Now and River Trust aren't a housing business. That's not what they do. They're not in social housing, essentially, which is what a lot of people they do. They do have use like 450 people. They, like, yeah, but they have to something. now because of the amount of people living here. That, that is their job. My last letter from Canal and River Trust, which was sent to my postal address, didn't have any postage on, so I ended up having to pay for it, uh, which is here. The vessel known as Higgledy Peabody, currently moored or left, is there without lawful authority because they've removed my lawful authority. We, the Canal and River Trust, intend to remove the vessel known as Higgledy Piggledy from the inland waterways. That's two days' time that they are intend to remove our, our boat from the water. I will be liable for all expenses. CRT may, at any time thereafter, remove or demolish the houseboat known as Higgledy Piggledy. I think it's just being a bit rude, asking you to put, you know, pay, for, pay for your own abusive mail. I would imagine that if everybody suddenly discovered that they could travel in excess of 15 to 20 miles over their licence year, then Kalala River Trust would move the goalposts and they would make it 30 miles and then 40 miles and then 50 miles until they got rid of all the liveaboard boaters without home moorings that they wanted to get rid of, which is probably most of us. Knowing how beautiful this was, we decided that we'd go and take a journey around the country to see England by canal, imagining that everywhere we went would be like this, and it's not. When we got up onto the Oxford Canal, you get a bit of a depression when you realise that there's actually no community. People have been settled on groups of moorings. You could really tell that people had been moved out of Oxford. The boating community has basically been decimated, and the centre of Oxford has been made short-term mooring only. On the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal, enforcement has concentrated on forcing boaters to travel on extremely dangerous tidal waters and many people have put themselves and their boats in danger. Enforcement against boaters without home moorings in London has been ramped up in the last few years. London has about 100 miles of inland waterways and there's plenty of space for everybody. One of the problems in London is that a lot of the towpaths in the last eight or so years have been concreted over, which means that boats can't moor there anymore. All of these different strategies are aimed to disperse communities of liveaboard boaters and uh, indeed Canal and River Trust uh, declared that as an aim in a, a policy document that it published in 2020. 12. I personally believe that Canal and River Trust would like to turn this into something that's just a leisure industry. They want more hire boaters and they want less liverboards. Even though they're a charity, they're still a business. So I think Canal and River Trust are trying to increase the amount of money they get from the waterways. Liverboards don't generate as much money as hire boaters. We've always said they should be here on a weekend. They come on a Monday or Tuesday. 
sneak through on a bicycle to put a few tickets on and note where all the boats are, but they're not here on a weekend when there's holiday boats everywhere crashing into things and you don't feel like they can possibly represent what's going on out here if they don't see it and they're not really a part of it. I think a lot of the pressure comes from marinas. I think that's where you've got the big prejudice. Because of the pressure from that, because there's so much more money in the marinas, I think they have quite a big voice. When there were people on the ground that dealt with the canals, there, were lock keep there was a lock keeper in Bradford, there was a lock keeper in Bath, two lock keepers on Devizes. You know, we got on fine with them. But now they want to run the canals by computer, and you can't. They haven't got a clue what's going on. Now they pick on people without even thinking, well, maybe that person is an asset to the canal. It's getting more and more difficult. And I hear my friends being told to take your boat and sling your hook. I've seen them for 25 years, and they're finally, they've realised that they're accountable to nobody. They're completely out of control. Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights states that a public body has to respect people's homes. We're not a public body, are we, now? But we have some public functions, which is the navigation authority bit. I replied to my section 13, got the email from CRT with the response saying, take it to the next level if you like, but we haven't taken anything you say as a valid reason for you not moving and we're not going to reinstate your licence. You know, the amount of time and energy that I'm putting into trying to deal with CRT is detracting so much from the energy that I ought to be putting into Cub that I just started to put more effort into trying to sell the boat because, quite frankly, it's not a place that I want to live anymore. I feel wrong to be going when I know I'm in a strong position to kind of fight my corner, but... I haven't got the energy to be doing it anymore. I've been doing it for too long. So I'm selling my boat for less than half of the insured value and I'm moving off and I'm trying to turn it into something positive, an adventure. It's a chance to see other cultures, see different things, but it does mean that we're moving into a tiny little van. We're gutted, like he's cried himself to sleep so many times, but we'll do something else. <laughs> Hello. Voters feel insecure about what's actually required of them and they're fearful for the future. They're afraid of what's going to happen so they either decide to give up their homes or they travel distances that make their lives extremely difficult and put them out of reach of things like their children's school or medical facilities or make it extremely difficult for them to get to work every day. Are you going to come and help with the sale then, Cub? You're going to come and help? Full sale. Thank you. <laughs> Just gets it all out of the boat. Yeah. That's the important thing. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get rid of loads and loads of other stuff. I don't really like selling my toys because I've never done it. Do you know, selling quite... Quite ones that I quite like, but I don't care because I I know that I need to like let it go because if I don't then we'll be keeping all of my toys. And not much of hers, and it'll be a bit unfair. So I need to let it go. Do you think that the the threat of eviction that could lead to homelessness is a proportionate response to a failure to comply with minimum cruising distances, which? ultimately are not specified in the law. It's never a good thing when boats have to go to court and ultimately we have to take that action if people ignore the guidance and take advantage of the waterways. Before it was a handful every year and the majority of boaters seem to think that these criminal types or whatever they were portrayed as ought to be swiftly dealt with and everybody was kind of cheering on the management. But I think a lot of people are now wising up to what the management is actually doing. And because more people are involved in the enforcement programme, there's more people willing to defend themselves. Nobody minds moving. It's part of the way of life. It's what we embrace about the lifestyle. But these new rules that keep coming up, 
it, it's threatening our way of life and, and you never know what they're going to say next. We are all in it together because, as you say, you know, if they're picking off person by person, divided we fall. If we come together and support each other, it's um, good for us as a community because we know that we will help each other. Um, and it also sends a message to um, CRT that, you know, uh, there, there will be a discussion about this. We won't just be ridden over roughshod. People aren't going to let Canal River Trust deprive them of their homes. They're going to fight back. <laughs>